a Philadelphia area AP economics teacher. And uh, today, today we're, we're going to do a little review of the scoring rubric for the 2018 AP micro free response question number three that was taken last Friday. Uh, uh, the song you hear in the background from Rolling Stones Economics is Hockey Talk Woman, and this, this is a this is a question that has to do with a student named Noralia. So I'm going to have two Malcolm Prep juniors who excelled in AP Economics this year: Dylan Tran and Ashton Canavan. Canavan are going to present to you the uh, question number three. Thank you. So here's the question. Uh, Neuralia is a student at the University of Ansley. She spent, she has five hours to study for two exams today. You guys understand that, don't you? Two hours to study for, uh, five hours to study for two exams. You better use your time wisely. You better think like an economist. The tables below show Neuralia's, Neuralia's expected scores given the amount of time she studies for each exam. Guys, can see that there. <clears throat> question A, the first of five parts on this short question. Norali spends three hours studying microeconomics. Could you point to that, Dylan? Three hours studying microeconomics and two hours studying history. Calculate her gain from the second hour spent studying history. All right, so what we're looking for here is marginal utility, which is of what, how much the output increases with an additional unit of input. So we go from one hour spent studying history to two hours spent. So we go to the output and we see it goes from 40 to 60. Uh, some simple arithmetic here, you see that this is 20. So she gains 20 points on her history exam with the additional hour spent for the second hour. That's great. Marginal utility, marginal productivity for that hour spent. Thank you very much, Ashton. Question B. Calculate Norali's opportunity cost of the second hour spent studying history. Yep. So uh, when looking for opportunity cost here, we really want to see how much uh, of her score she's giving up when she's studying that second hour of history. So if we say she's studying the three in micro, two for history, she would get a 90 and a 60, but if she gave up that second hour, or if she, um, yeah, if she didn't, if she gave up that second hour of studying history, she would gain six points on her microeconomics uh, exam, so that would be the opportunity cost. Six points is, the, yes. is that, that's the answer. Very, very good. Question C. We're just about halfway completed this short question. Assume the rallies increases the time she allocates, I love that word allocates, to studying history. What happens to the opportunity cost of study, studying history? And this one you've got to explain. All right. So if you look, these tables are conveniently set up where if you add straight across, it'll equal five hours. So if you look as these increase, these numbers decrease at an even more rapid rate. So if say she goes, if she's studying four hours for history and she gives up that one hour from microeconomics uh, and goes to five hours, she loses a full 60, which is way more than the 12 she loses, or the 22 she loses here, or the eight she uses here. So you can clearly see that the opportunity cost is increasing as time allocated to this, uh, studying history um, increases. Ashley, that was, that was an excellent way to explain that, that realistic situation with exams coming up, actually. All right, question D, one more part after this. D, assume, and we always a lot in economics use that word, assume that the rally has a goal of maximizing the sum of her test scores. Do you guys do that? You'd like to get the best you can on both? The score on microeconomics plus the score on history. Here's the question. How many hours should she study for each exam? All right, so here the college board was really nice. They set up the hours uh, accordingly. They add up to five, like Ashley had mentioned before. So if we we can just simply add them up, so 100, zero is 100, 96, 40 is 136, we got 150, 
133. So we see here the largest number, which is the sum, is 154. And this row here is the maximizing, maximizing her test score sum. So two hours of micro, three hours of history. Uh, I have to interject here. Her history teacher is probably pretty happy that she's spending three on history. But her microeconomic teacher <clears throat> would question that. However, she is making the optimal choice. I have yes. to give her that. Okay. Final question. You guys have done a magnificent job. Here's the last one. Norelli learns that her tennis practice has been canceled. Get this. She loves that. Tennis, love. Freeing up an additional hour for studying. Given your answer to part D, will Norelli allocate the additional hour, hour to studying microeconomics or to studying history to maximizing the sum of her 10 scores, and as you already did, explain using marginal analysis. All right, so we're right back looking at marginal benefit, the same we did on the, or marginal utility, the same we did as the first question. So we can either allocate the hour here and go four hours uh, with history and two for economics, or the hour here and go to three hours for economics and three hours for history. So we look, we see we gain five points when we spend the additional hour studying history, so the marginal utility is five. We go over here, we go from two to three, it looks like we gain eight points, so the marginal utility for this is eight points. Now we compare eight and five, and it's clear that you want to spend the additional hour spent studying microeconomics, which I think would make Mr. Austin pretty happy. It would make me pretty happy, and it would make Norelli not a hockey tonk woman, but a really good economic thinker. You guys did a super job on that. Uh, I want to thank you for that, and I want to thank you for pro providing for the others for providing the rubric to the answer to this question. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.